those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Believers, in times of adversity, remember to anchor your faith in God's unwavering love and promises. Trust in His divine plan and find strength in His presence. May this message serve as a source of encouragement and reaffirm your unshakable relationship with Him. Remain blessed as you listen. Let's go to our scripture. I want to show you something. Please. First Corinthians 15. Please sit. Please sit. This is Paul articulating the gospel in a very clear term. If you have never known what the gospel is, this right here is the gospel. Moreover, my goodness, okay. Brethren, he says, I declare unto you the gospel. Watch this now. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, he says, which also ye have received. I wish we could project it. I want the people to see it. Is that possible? Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, watch this, which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Reading to 4 verse 2. By which also ye are saved. So how were they saved? By the communication of the gospel. He said, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. What then is the gospel? Verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. For, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. The gospel of salvation is the revelation of the Father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, his son man and creation being the object of that sacrifice and the bible declares based on the authority of scripture that any man who believes believes in what number one that jesus came as an expression of the love of the father number two that he came and prayed and paid the ultimate price of death shedding his blood and dying are we together now and that he resurrected by the glory of the father peter rounded up his sermon in acts chapter 2 by saying let it now be known to you O israel that this same jesus whom you have crucified have today been exalted as lord and christ pastors we must preach the gospel before we teach the word the word is only for believers who are saved please listen Preaching the word, rema, doctrine, communication of truth is only for people who have met Jesus. It is a waste teaching anybody who is not saved. The teaching ministry was designed, as you will be learning tomorrow, to mature the saints, to translate them to be people of stature and to be witnesses. But in order of priority, the first assignment of any man of God and any believer as far as being incorporated in God's program is concerned is to see to it that men meet Jesus not by blindly claiming salvation not by assuming they are saved longevity around church does not translate to salvation serving a man of God sincerely does not translate to salvation being a worker in church in fact being a sincere person does not translate to salvation. Hallelujah. And when you come out, an altar call is just a means of organizing those who are saved. The Bible lets us know according to Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, that the protocol for salvation is that your heart and your lips must participate. If your heart and your lips does not particip participate, you are not saved. Hear what the Bible says. 
if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and thou shalt believe in thine heart you see that most people do the confession part but in truth they don't believe and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead when you study about the Pharisees and the Sadducees it was this one striking difference that was a subject of controversy Pharisees and Sadducees never were friends they only came together as a force to fight Jesus before now they were always at loggerheads and it was the doctrine of the resurrection I hope you know that one of the foundational doctrine there are six foundational doctrines according to Hebrews chapter 6 that build the believer to maturity and stature are we together one of it is the doctrine of the resurrection you are not a Christian if you do not believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead because the victory was at the point of resurrection resurrection was proof that he had defeated sin Satan death hell and the grave if he did not raise up from the dead there would not be that statement where is oh death where is your victory oh hell where is your sting Jesus rose again it is true and because he rose again all the saints shall arise remember Apostle Paul was teaching the church in Thessalonica and he was comforting them and teaching them as touching the destiny of those who die and he let them know that when people die in the faith we do not say they are dead we say they have slept because when men sleep they wake up so the concept of the resurrection is what changed the idea for a Christian from death to sleep that those who sleep sleep at night and those who sleep have an assurance that they will wake up the psalmist said I lay me down and I slept some three and I awake for the Lord sustain me so that one day watch this now a day is going to come ladies and gentlemen I wish I had the time I would have taught you the seven pillars of the Christian faith there are seven pillars that represent the Christian faith we may differ across many divides we represent different denominations here with the honor to our various beliefs and there might be differences here and there but there are seven pillars that must not shift if you do not believe that you are not a Christian one of it is the incarnation that Jesus was God and is God and came born of the Virgin Mary you must believe in the incarnation you must believe in his earth work that he lived upon the earth he walked although a man he lived a sinless life born of Mary and born of the Spirit you must believe in the fact that he came to represent the purposes of God he came as an advocate there are three major reasons why Jesus came to the earth number one Jesus came to the earth as a correction of our understanding about an unknown God because until Jesus manifested men did not know God there was no widespread manifestation of the Holy Spirit so the dead inhabitants had to depend on what the prophets told them God was and they made a lot of mistakes there were gaps in their knowledge they credited many things that was not God to God because we see in part and we prophesy in part so Jesus came as a manuscript he came as a marking script correcting the prior idea that we had about God so everything the prophets claim that God was we will reference it against the life and the earth work of Jesus and it now gives us a scriptural basis to edit what they told us God is for instance when the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love you have a right to doubt it until you see it proven in the life of Jesus how did he respond to people the Bible will say he was moved with compassion based on Jesus we can say those prophets were right as far as touching that statement is concerned are we together now when you hear things like a lying spirit came from God now we look at Jesus and Jesus said Satan was a liar and the father of all them that lie so we know that based on Jesus we need to correct that thing the prophet said that is how we judge scripture we judge scripture using the lens of Jesus are we together the second reason why Jesus came was as a pattern man a model to the believer that will come out as a result of his resurrection we are products and fruits of the resurrection 
in truth we are not i know it's old testament new testament but the believer is not really the new testament as we say we are products of it are we together now it was on account of the resurrection it was the holy spirit that birthed our dispensation god for us god with us emmanuel when jesus walked upon the earth now god in us the dispensation of the holy spirit began from acts chapter 2 and will end finally when believers are raptured in fact what you call rapture is the temporary exiting of the holy spirit together with the believers because we are bound with him we have to go to that is the reason why the the bible defines light as the world without us are we together now it's very important for you to understand this from the day the holy ghost came to the earth he has not left earth he cannot leave it's inseparable he shall be with you and shall be in you he's with us the holy spirit has the official status of the lord of the harvest he is the overseer over this global harvest this is the reason why we know that in spite of our frailty the mission will not fail not because of us but because of the builder the lord of the harvest are we learning now so jesus came as a model the bible says looking unto jesus he calls him the author and the finisher of our faith he came to model to the believer what it means to be approved of god what it means to please the father because the father had this to say about jesus that he was his beloved son in whom he was well pleased the third reason why jesus came was as a mediator that's the one that most believers know as a mediator he came through the the penalty of death and the shedding of his blood that he will call many sons into glory reconciling us back to the father why to give us access to receive righteousness the life of god and eventually the holy spirit you find that in galatians chapter 3 i believe from verse 8 it says christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is every man that hanged upon the tree that the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles verse 8 he says um, that to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith i'm not sure my media person is working with me verse 8 you go to 8 huh am i right on that find it for me yeah 8 9 10 i think somewhere along that line christ that redeemed us from the curse of the law so to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith nobody has access to the holy spirit until you have righteousness equal to that of jesus and that qualifies you now to have the life of god even the spirit of god this is very important i'm saying this because it is important for us to know and understand that if we must be effective if jesus christ must be revealed in any good state the first part of call is a restoration of the mandate of soul winning a restoration of the mandate of soul winning a restoration of the mandate of soul winning that every church every mission agency indeed every believer we must know that we are principally saddled with the assignment of seeing to it that souls are saved beginning from our families to schools to everywhere and the bible lets us know that in the mind of god every unsaved person is called a harvest a harvest that is already ripe that if for any reason there is difficulty in gathering the harvest the problem is not from the harvest the problem is the quality of the laborers you must understand the gospel the gospel is not man's idea the gospel does not demand creativity in terms of communicating it it is fixed the truth there are exact that jesus came he died are we together he resurrected by the glory of the father and the bible tells us that while we are giving witness to that truth the holy spirit is ever there to back us that every kind of backing you need to prove that what you are saying is not a lie god is ready to coordinate the resources of heaven god is ready to coordinate the power even if it is the powers of the age to come if it will help to enhance your communication of the gospel that god's hand is not restrained as far as making it available to you is concerned now 
the preaching of the gospel will demand three kinds of people this is my last communication and then we'll pray number one as far as the global harvest is concerned there are three kinds of people God is looking for number one they are called prophetic intercessors as far as the global harvest is concerned this is the strategy that has been used by God from time immemorial if you want to see a widespread manifestation of salvation number one prophetic intercessors the assignment of these people is to pray the program of God to come please help them my God ushers please be around so that if anybody falls so that we manage them and then we don't have any casualties hallelujah let me have your attention please are we together so the Bible says look at me please that I sought for a man I sought for a man I sought for a man there are many many people please look at me there are many many people God is looking for many many people that God is counting on seeking for a man a man that he will use as a prophetic intercessor you want to see the darkness over Enugu give way may God find men who know how to pray not just prayer for themselves intercession demands that you look away from your personal needs and focus on the program of God are we together now prophetic intercessors I believe that there are people here who God has already raised and there are yet many people male and female educated and uneducated young and old all together I'm praying that somebody by the spirit will make himself a willing vessel from tonight that I will be a prophetic intercessor that you will carry Enugu as a project and keep it before your prayer altar and say father Maranatha let Jesus come let revival come let your program be birthed one of the assignments of prophetic intercession is to birth and to sustain God's program there is no genuine revival that is birthed and sustained without a robust prophetic intercessory ministry he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray Luke 18 and verse 1 and not to faint Enugu you must trust God to have men of prayer men of prayer fervent and effectual prayer that you make it a duty to intercede for all the men of God in this city you make it a duty to intercede for all the programs you hear that a crusade is happening don't say it's not my church if it is Jesus it is your business the moment the name of the G of Jesus will be mentioned it has become your business immediately and the least you can do is to pray father the vessel who will be used there moving power through that person that the gospel is communicated with precision and with accuracy in Acts chapter 4 that was a prayer of the apostles that you grant by the spirit that miracles be wrought in the name of your holy son to the end that Jesus be revealed and the moment they pray the Bible says the place shook Enugu there must be people who pray gentlemen and ladies be people of prayer not as an emergency response system you must learn to pray hold on to the horns of the altar pray away curses pray away darkness pray away the blindfolding layers that are covering potential prophets potential apostles the spirits that are stunting churches and not allowing for growth and expansion for so many to come and be transformed that becomes your project and you pray it until you see like Elijah a manifestation of that which has been finished in the spirit number two the second group of people who will be needed for this global harvest are those who are sent to the field sent to the field you can call them evangelists you can call them preachers everybody who must declare that message how shall they hear except they be a preacher a preacher is not just one who is standing with a mic on a pulpit a preacher is one who is determined to declare Jesus to the nations you can preach by singing you can preach by declaring you can take advantage of social media platforms to articulate Jesus to as many and if it is one person who is hearing you God is still grateful that you took a step can I tell you the price of one soul 
is the blood of Jesus. And if you are to save everybody that is unsaved, it will happen one by one by one by one. A little statistics to challenge you. There are only 2.8 billion professing Christians on earth out of the over 8 billion people. I don't know how many professing Christians are in Enugu. I don't know how many professing Christians are in the, are in the Southeast. I'm not sure there is an exact statistics for that. But whatever it is, I can tell you that it is a wake-up call for all of us. 2.6 billion professing Christians out of 8, 8 billion inhabitants upon the earth, we still have a long way going. And it may interest you to know that from a statistical standpoint, the fastest growing religion in the world is not the Christian faith, unfortunately. The harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. The laborers are few. Among the many strategies the believer was given, he left us the creativity of inventing superior strategies of communicating Jesus. When the gospel was given to the apostles, there was no social media. Isn't it amazing that through the power of platforms like YouTube, I am here speaking, and yet I can speak to the whole nation. I can speak to the entire globe from one position. This is a profound advantage. This is what the prophet saw by revelation as a flying scroll. He says, what seest thou? He was talking about the power of technology in being able to capture the gospel. He could only call it a flying scroll. The power of media. Media was only known to be a book, but now he's seen a scroll that can go on air. Hallelujah prophetic intercessors and then a vast army of people who will see to it that everyone they can find is saved are you ready for the last people the last group that must be involved to make the global harvest come to pass are financiers advancing the purposes of god as far as communicating the gospel is concerned is very expensive you know that by now you hear me say the name of Jesus is very heavy, that it takes resources to lift it high for the nations to see. I was teaching my people on Sunday, and we explored the scripture where men were given money to say that Jesus did not resurrect. Satan is still paying people till today to say Jesus is not risen. Financial resources are very powerful when they are used properly. And there are many of you here, I'm speaking to Easterners. Do you know why God gave you a unique grace? Watch this. Let me give you one prophetic word and we'll pray. Do you know why God invested the creativity and the ability to produce wealth in the East? It is because there is an assignment, corporately speaking, as far as funding the program of God. People will fund the program of God from across the globe, but there is a sound of kingdom financing that should come from the East that God is yet to hear. And there are people that God is raising. It is not about being a businessman. You listen to what I'm telling you. Many do not even know why they are business inclined. They just know that I have a passion for business and I'm doing well. I'm exporting, I'm importing. I can tell you, behind that is not just to gather money and build houses. Mm -mm. Because a time will come when an end time shofar will sound. And God will say, where are the people that have placed resources in their hands? Let's make this happen now. And one man will rise like a nation and say, as far as soul winning in the East is concerned, here are my resources. It took Joseph of Arimathea donating his grave, donating his sepulcher for Jesus to be buried. Otherwise, there would not be resurrection. Eastern as hear me, you have a prophetic assignment in this end time. The intelligence God gave you as far as transacting wealth is concerned. It is not just a heritage that God gave a people like that. It is for a purpose. And very soon, the one who gave you that grace is going to come and say, What did you do with the five talent I gave you? What did you do with the two talent I gave you? I blessed this family with an uncommon ability to do business. Every one of the six people have become a millionaire. Now I have come. Where is the five talent? Have you turned it to ten? Because there is need for some of those talents to go to the crusade ground. 
there is need for structures and systems to be built as far as souls are concerned so if you find yourself doing business with this understanding you will now know that it's more than making money it is a mandate you are fulfilling this is the one problem i have with the prosperity message if it is not pro kingdom and a vision is not given it now becomes a marketing of flesh carnality that leads people towards destruction what brings perspective to the message of wealth and abundance is when it is connected to this purpose of kingdom come ask every man of God here seated and they will tell you there are ministries here the running cost of church just on Sunday or one week a week probably would start the building projects of many people and yet this is what happens only God can tell the amount of financial investment that went in for this program please do not downplay the importance of financial resources when it enters the heart of air the hand of someone whose heart is stayed on seeing that souls are saved hallelujah God is counting on you God is counting on me and I don't know about you but I vowed by the Spirit of God that I will not fail that by the Spirit of the Living God as far as it depends on me the hymn writer says I'll be a true soldier he says I'll die at my post he will come and find me there diligently serving 